last 20 years, it's, I suppose, fair to say that Autodesk Vault, or at least it would appear, has been hacked around more times than Michael Jackson was. Uh, we've had Vault, we've had Product Stream, which was then hacked into uh, Vault Collaboration, Vault Workgroup, and Vault Manufacturing, which was then hacked up again into what we've got today, at least as it stands for now, which is Vault Basic and Vault Professional. I guess we've also got Vault Office as like a little side license, but what does all this even mean? What does it do? Well, if you were to approach Autodesk and say to them, Ah, greetings, good sir. How the devil are you? Tip top. Now then, might you graciously aid in a better's one's cherished confidant by facilitating in one's assignment. Now, one wishes to be enlightened as to which of your spiffing treasures and artifacts would embellish and decorate one's business modus operandi in the stricter sense of enabling oneself to effectively manage one's files in a more precocious manner. <laughs> one might even dare to say data, as you quirky Americans would articulate. I do beg your pardon. I, I do say, that is rather unfortunate. <laughs> uh, what Autodesk should guide you towards, mate, is Vault Professional. So Vault Basic is what you get bundled in with most of Autodesk's hero, flagship, CAD products. And uh, that gets you your basic on-premise data management. But Vault Professional, on the other hand, it uses the same core components that you get with Vault Basic. In fact, you can even migrate up to Vault Professional from Vault Basic quite easily. But it brings a ton of extra features that are really quite compelling. Now, this could easily be a four hour long presentation, mate. So I'm gonna have to keep things pretty brief and high level. But let's start with one of the longest standing, yet still most confusing features to some that you get with Vault Professional, and that would be its items. Now, as with most things here, this is entirely optional. You don't have to use these features when you go with Vault Professional. Uh, but a Vault Pro item, it's think of it as like a, a digital data record that represents a physical product or an, an item that your business might manufacture or purchase. But you could be thinking to yourself, well, hang on, hang on about you. Wait, wait a second. Isn't that what the CAD file's for? Yeah, mm, sort of, but a lot of companies end up having CAD files that represent all kinds of rubbish. You might have a model file that represents a skeletal model part, or you might have assembly files that literally don't exist in the real world, but in the CAD world, they're used for grouping parts together. Or you might have supplier parts in your assemblies that are used for positional referencing, right? You don't want those to be in your bill of materials. So items are created to represent an asset that your company makes or buys, and the CAD files that are depicting that asset can then be attached or even they can even drive the items metadata or all these items are found in vault professionals item master list where non-cad users can then search for known part numbers instead of weirdly named cad file names and the items are assigned revisions they can be released and they can be routinely as well exported out from vault pro using common data exchange formats like xml or csv and published into downstream erp systems like the likes of sap or microsoft dynamics what then if someone on the shop floor spots something like a, I don't know, a fitting issue, just keep this pretty simple. The bolts don't line up with the holes on a plate, all <laughs> right? Well, a request to change the design is usually then generated, but in Vault Professional, you do this through, or you can do this at least through its Digital Engineering Change Order System, or ECO. So what happens is a change request is raised by somebody, it's automatically given its own unique number, and then someone with the relevant permissions can then approve that change, the item that's under the change or the CAD files can then be unlocked and off you go with a new revision of that design. Everything regarding that change as well is logged onto the digital ECO mate, which is critical for auditing purposes and conforming to many international accreditation standards. Not to mention the fact that uh, the change list is available as well to all non-CAD staff who might often need visibility into what's currently on change in the business. And they can do that using the browser-based Vault Thin or web client, which is again, unique to Vault Professional. And that leads us into digital life cycles mate, that I just mentioned and its revisions. So in Vault Pro, both your items and your files can be assigned a fully customizable revision sequence and a life cycle state. Whereas in Vault Basic, you you only get version numbers. So you can assign things like revision A, work in progress to a file, or revision B, released, with named product categories that dictate what files go onto which life cycle. For example, your regular manufacturable designs could get the 
alphabetic revision sequence uh, and full multi-state life cycles like work in progress files can then go out to review or released or even quick change mate. And quick change is super useful for correcting non-design based errors like uh, constraint failures and or typos on a drawing that's just been released. Things that you want to change without having to bump up the revision letter for something which frankly mate just doesn't justify a bump in a revision. So with each state having its own security policy as well, you get a lot of flexibility with this, allowing administrators to decide who can and can't do anything at any point, like move files into quick change. Or then you might want to put stuff like nuts and bolts, things that don't undergo regular or any kind of design change from you onto like a, a simple locked and unlocked life cycle with no revision assigned because things like nuts and bolts mate they just don't undergo their own design change and if they ever did like from the supplier it's likely going to be a completely new part design with a new supplier part number attached to it with a new model speaking of part numbers mate be honest hands up who's got an excel spreadsheet uh, on a network perhaps which handles your next part number What's that? What's that mean? You still got a book that does that, mate? Right, Vault Pro, it's got its own strong and robust automatic part number generator for not just your CAD files, but literally for any file that you can put in a vault, which is literally anything. And it seamlessly integrates across into the likes of Inventor and AutoCAD, meaning whenever an engineer clicks save for the first time, a box is gonna pop up giving them the next number in the part number sequence. This is then applied to the file name itself and the part number metadata field if that's available in the likes of inventor files. Uh, the actual part number itself as well can be customized to your company's standards with different schemes being possible for different file types or product types and it pushes itself out to everyone in the company who uses Autodesk CAD programs that support this. And if any of those people are in another country, mate, well, how are you collaborating with them right now? How are you getting data across them? How are you working or sharing on data sets? How's Roger in the US and Shirley in Australia both going to use the same CAD files without having to send a duplicate copies of the data across country or using something like Dropbox, mate, which can get really messy? Well, with Vault Professional, you can enable what they call their replication on the vault, which can put an identical cloned copy of your entire vault into all and any of your global offices and it keeps them all synchronized together. It's a local copy of the vault in each country all synced up. This means that everyone globally is gonna be working from the same vault. So if Shirley edits a part, Roger is gonna see that pretty much instantaneously and he'll have access to the latest version. If Roger then checks a drawing out to him, Shirley in Australia, she can't edit that until Roger's finished up with that drawing. And with the advanced security model as well that you get with Vault Pro, if you've got any contractors, for example, coming into, let's say the UK office, you can design it up so that they can't see, if you so want, any data that the US office might have created. And that might, because it might be military sensitive or whatever reason you might have for keeping that data off to one side and away from other people. Speaking of contractors, mate, you might have end users off site needing to access your vault, which by its nature, Vault is an on-premise solution localized within your local area network. So how do people outside of the business access that whilst they're off-site? Well, you could set up something like a company-wide VPN service, which would then need to be managed at a almost granular level to allow access for those contractors just to one server to make sure they don't get access to your entire network. Or you can use the Vault Professional Gateway feature, mate. This essentially creates a unique internet address just for your Vault server. And when using that off-site, it tunnels the end user through that and directly to your Vault server and nothing else. It's basically kind of like an Autodesk dedicated provided VPN tunnel. But when it's enabled, this allows users to download and work on files whilst they're off-site without needing that dedicated third-party VPN service, which your IT is likely gonna have to manage. But on the topic of downloading and working on files, again, hands up, mate who's got a super messy local working folder or who knows somebody that's got one. Every company has that guy, right? With a 50 gig size local workspace. He's basically got no idea what's in there, what's, what's in Vault, right? What's not in Vault, what's old in his workspace, what's not even in Vault anymore, but it's still in his workspace. But that's fine, mate, because Vault Professional's got a feature called Workspace Sync. 
and that lets individual users clean up their local workspace based on rules and criteria. Like for example, delete stuff in your local workspace, which just isn't in Vault anymore. Delete stuff that's in your workspace that's been sat in there for over a year and hasn't been touched. Because when, mate, when that user leaves the company, the workspace on his laptop that he's left behind, it's got 200,000 files in there and you know he's been working on something important. He's almost got a, an entire backup of the whole vault in his local workspace. Good luck figuring that out, mate. Speaking of backups, this isn't even arguable, all right? It, it's the most important part of a vault administrator's role, making sure the vault is backed up and kept safe. But let's say your vault's got two million files in there. Depending on the server, like the disk speeds, CPU, resource, that kind of thing, that backup can easily still be running well into the next working day if you set it off at night with Vault Basic, mate, that would mean nobody can work on the Vault at all until it's finished doing its backup because Vault Basic shuts down all the Vault services whilst it's doing the backup. Not with Vault Professional though, you can run a backup at any time of the day and the business can just carry on operational whilst you're waiting on that backup to finish. And for those curious about operating more efficiently, well, you can make use of what's known as Vault Professional's job processor. Think of this as like a like a little worker process, constantly waiting for new jobs being handed to it. And it'll then process those jobs on a dedicated workstation, it can be a VM as well, instead of users having to do the jobs on their workstations. And this can be jobs like printing PDFs and releasing drawings, converting items into those translation packages and then sending them off to the ERP system. It can upload files to the Autodesk Fusion team platform at the end of the day, or chomp through the vault looking for duplicated CAD files, which is another feature of Vault Professional, the duplicate file finder. This isn't just some basic ass script either which looks for files with the same name. No, this is an algorithm which identifies if the same part file is used twice or more in the vault with even with different names. Something which is very common and quite troublesome in design offices. Like how many people have got 20 odd different files for the exact same M10 bolt? Because you can never be asked to look for it. It's difficult to find. You've got no idea what it's called. Uh, you can't be asked to look anymore. So you just make another one. It seems quicker to do that, right? Well, not, not that big of a problem, mate, for nuts and bolts. But when this starts happening on actual design files, then you run the risk of someone finding an old duplicate and then modifying that instead of the latest one, because they might think it is. And then what you'll end up with is assemblies all over your vault referencing different versions of the same product. And there's also integrated shared views in Vault Professional for online design publishing and sharing with outside parties. There's Project Sync, which is the tech used to link vault folders to online cloud drives. Uh, working alongside the job processor, and uh, not to mention the Vault mobile app as well. This is a really handy little app optimized for Android or iOS, which lets you get at your Vault on mobile or tablet. And it even works as well, mate, with the Vault gateway. So you can be expected to work anytime, anywhere, no matter where you are. So if you're interested in checking out prices for Vault Professional, mate, I'll leave a little linkity linkity in the doobly doos down below. My name's Neil Cross. This has been just WTF is Vault Professional. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you next time. Doodles.